Thank you, everyone. It feels so different to be in real space and not looking at the screen and, and sort of delivering. So thank you so much for having me here. And this is today's World Theatre Day. So happy World Theatre Day to everyone. I'm sure you have experienced theatre in your life or on stage, but surely we are all connected with each other from as theatre artists anyway. We are all acting all the time, we are all performing all the time, we are all doing our jobs as actors all the time. So, so we are all directly or indirectly related to theatre. And one of the most key important things which I learned by my engagement with, with folk art, folk stories, folk culture, is the sense of staying connected. That's so, so important. And so I'm so excited to share some of the things which, which I found on the way. And I'm sure it might be helpful or it might be just relatable to, to all of you in different ways. So that is one of the important things which I learned or, or, or feel. Actually, learn is not the right word. Uh, I, I now look for connection. I look for that we have to come together in some way, in whatever way possible. And that comes from folk understanding of life. That is what I, I experienced with, with folk understanding of life. Because I come from a science background. I come from a background which is conceptual, abstract, which is concept, content heavy. And so for me, it was always in the beginning, it was about, oh, what am I talking about? The big ideas of the world and all of that. And, and really missed in the beginning days of my, uh, my journey, this idea of coming together. That theater for me now is about coming together in whatever way. To, to, to listen to someone, to share stories, to be together, to, to watch a performance, or to just come and talk, or to train together, right? When we are doing these gestures, when we are sort of talking to each other in these reactions, and like right now, like what happened when I'm waving, when we are clapping, there's a sense of togetherness, right? So two things, one is gesture. A gesture of any kind, be it a virtual gesture or a real gesture, be it a verbal gesture or a physical gesture. We are trying to sort of knock on people's doors. We are trying to express, express something which is very complicated. Like our experience is hugely, hugely complicated and yet we are articulating them in the simplified gestures because we want to share it. Right? And that process of articulation is important because that is about, in theatre, and in every art form, obviously. It's about the experience articulated in something which is more perceptible, which is more receptible. And because it is complicated experience, our life, and we want to articulate it. And that, I think, is key to any artist. This need, this desire to articulate what we go through or what our society go through. Right? And, and so that is what artists do. And not everyone, obviously, has time, space, energy and technique to sort of do it. So artists do it so that some people can relate with it. And some people are like, hmm, that's not relatable to me. And sure, that's OK. Right. So, so the artist's job definitely is to put the hard work, to, to go through the experience, and to find an articulation which other people can resonate with, and not just say just this much. And that's a huge job. That is something which, which I carry from the beginning of my work with my practice. Where there are big ideas and how do we big bring these big ideas on stage? What do we do so that these big ideas are represented? These big ideas are present on stage or in whatever form. It's also called the idea of transposition, which we have been doing since the beginning of our civilization, right? Like right now, if I say there are 15 people here, let's say, I'm just putting a number. 15 is abstract. There's no point, right? But it's a language which helps me understand what 15 is. It is not a necessary thing, but for me to articulate so that I can do something about it. That I can make arrangements about it. I can think about it. And that process is deep, deep, deep down in the beginning of our civilization or beginning of civilization. And that we continue to carry. And that brings us to a point of language. So what is my language in which I perform, I act, I, I do anything and everything which I do? Like right now I'm speaking in English. Like sometimes you don't need to speak, you just need to sit next to someone and just spend that time. And that gesture of sitting next to someone, not saying anything is enough. But that's language because physically you are making choices. You're deciding gestures, you're deciding actions which you should take. And today I feel after COVID we definitely need to enter into a world which is action oriented. What am I doing? 
what am I doing? I, I should do something. And that's language. Um, and every artist across the field are constantly asking themselves, what is my language? And why do we need that? Because once you have language, you can articulate your ideas, what we started talking about. All these experiences we can articulate. And the second part to it is the ability to share it with people. That is something which I really struggled in the beginning, beginning of the beginning of journey. Because I'm like, oh no, this is all about ideas. This is all about concept. This is all about, about, about content. Right? It's not about other people. I don't care if the other person understand or not. They have to understand something, sure, why not? If not, perfectly okay. That's where the folk influences come to me. Yeah? And I happen to arrive. And that's where I want to begin today's work. Today, this is just the back, background setting. Uh, of, of, of where the folk started entering into, into my life. And actually this is an interesting place to be because there's a temple which is so beautiful out there. there is, and this is like an urban space and there's a little more urban space. So it's already mixed. Like we live in India which is amazing because there's urban, tradition, modern, postmodern, all coexist. Yeah, like just exist and, and it's so beautiful. We don't pay attention. I was not paying attention as artist. I was definitely was completely involved in myself, spending time. But that is also necessary and I'll come back to that a little later. Why that part also is so crucial for any, any person, artist or non-artist, to spend that time with self and with ideas and, and craft. And stories are obviously one of the most important things, helping us make sense of the world. So when I was working with these ideas, I always ignored the influence and power of stories. I thought maybe stories are for like simple theater people. I, I feel very amateurish now of thinking that way. That I felt stories are simple theater. Like people who don't do good theater or professional theater or, or complicated theater, they tell stories. We are idea theater people. And I was so, so wrong. I didn't realize how powerful the stories are. And it depends on how we present them, how we perform them. That's where the technique comes in. So when a, a fakir is singing a song about desert in Rajasthan, it's not, the, he's not interested in the objective reality. Because objective reality you can see, you can experience what's, what's there. I mean, that's for children if you, if you ask them, right? But what is beyond that? What, is, what will help me to go deeper into my life? What will help me to really experience the life is what I'm interested in. I'm, this is not what I'm saying, I'm, for example, a folk artist. So how do we transcend the reality? What do we do about it? Because it exists. That was important. Like, ah, it's not just about presenting the ideas on stage. But it's about creating an experience which transcends the idea. Because ideas you can study, ideas you can see, ideas you can explore. Uh, you don't need theater for that. What is the point of theater? if? If it's just about passing it, then give a lecture on the ideas, right? Uh, and that should be enough. When, when, uh, when uh, a woman on streets with an ektara, like minimal instrument, sings, not, maybe not even tuned to any sort of thing, and still you are transported. And I'm like, wow, how do they do that? That's so powerful. There are no orchestra sitting, not classically trained for 20 years artist in the room and trying to create, compose music which is complicated. And this experience is exactly the same without them having any formal training. And this takes me, to, this, this, this is where I want to share a story. I, I was doing all these complicated theater ideas, experiment, experimental theater is what we used to call it before. I still, to be honest, continue to do that. I just now try to bring these layers from the folk world into that kind of theater. But I continue to do the, that work. So we're doing all this crazy stuff and I go to my village, which is in Rajasthan. And I, people ask me, older generation especially, they are interested in knowing what these people who have gone to cities, they are doing. You know, because most of them hear that they are either doing business or doing some job or something like that. And so one of the old person asked me, what do you do? Now, it is already complicated in my head what I do, because I'm trying to stay away from conventional theater. I say, um, I don't know how to explain. So I say, I tell stories. And he says, oh, like Kavadiyas. I'm like, who are Kavadiyas? 
And this person says, Kavariyas, I mean, these people used to come 40 years ago when we were children, they will come to our village, they will sit, make us sit around and they will have this kind of box with them and they will tell stories. I'm like, wow, where are they now? And he says, I don't know, I haven't seen them for 20, 30 years now. And I'm intrigued, I'm like, okay, this is interesting, I need to know. I come from this land, I have no clue about storytellers. We hear so much about other storytellers, folk performers and all of that. So I obviously took some friend's bike and I went on, out, to check on people like, hey, hey, who's Kavadiyas? People are like, Kavadiyas? Never heard of this word. Have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm more intrigued. And for me, this was an adventure trip. So it took some time, but I found, and it was an interesting place. So in Rajasthan, there are something called dhanis. And there are small dhanis, which are like 10 families living, 20 families living, that's all. And I stopped by a dhani because somebody told me that there is a Kavadiya who lives in this dhani. His name is Khoja Ramji. So I stop and I ask people, hey, do you know Khoja Ramji? And they're like, who Khoja Ramji? I don't know who's Khoja Ramji. I'm like, no, no, this Kavadiya, this storyteller, this box, all this. No idea. And this one person sitting under a neem tree, people tree, calls me and says, come, come here. I'll take you to his house. And he takes me to a house. He closes the door and he says, I'm Khoja Ramji. Tell me what happens. I'm like, you are Khoja, like, why don't people know about you? He says, because we don't reveal our identity. Nowadays, we don't, we just, we just go and do this ritual of coward when patrons invite us and they put us in this, their havelis, when their people, when their children from London, US, they come to show exotic Rajasthan. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> you know, this, they, and, and we do this puja, inter, like, we used to do it outside, like a public thing. Whoa, wow, why? This is... And I, so I, I spent some time with him, said, I will organize something in Bangalore. But he said, he's interested in ritual. He's not interested in art. And I didn't understand that time, but it took me a year and a half to understand what he said. Now, folk world is a different world. In the folk world, they live life. They don't isolate themselves as how modern contemporary artists do, immerse themselves in research and then create these intricate ideas and, and, and powerful things and whatever they do, you know, like a musician or a cinema maker or a theater artist or an abstract painter, right? They live life and their art belong to the life. So they paint the pot which, is, which has a functional value. You are going to make use of it. It's not for art only. So this idea of separating art, it was so obvious to me, but he's like, what are you saying? I have no clue what you're talking about. I'm saying, but what will happen to the art? It will die, it will extinct. And he's like, it's a ritual and rituals have to just stay until community exists. That's it, if community don't feel the need for ritual, that's it, done. I just couldn't understand what is going on as a, Contemporary person always thinking of getting name, you know, put out your show, go to festivals, talk about interesting things, get, you know, sound intelligent basically. That is where I was coming from. And here I am, he's like, what's the point? I, 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 I'm not interested. And I go, went back, I don't know how to process this entire thing. I continued my life. And, and I thought, what should I do? I, I need to know more about folk world. So I started reading stories, I started listening to more of them. And what do I do with it? So my wife Anita, she would say, you tell me the story, whatever you are reading. And so that was happening. All this mixed in the head, I started writing. Randomly with a piece, piece of paper and whatever kiosk, I started writing. And I happened to write 16 random, very complicated stories. Now I'm saying complicated because they are not structured in a normal story sense. Like once upon a time kind of sense. It's just sort of ideas, but it had characters. It had environment, it had actions. Somehow it all sort of came together. And I didn't know how to structure it. And I thought, maybe I need to look at Coward. Maybe I need to immerse further. And so we created this piece. Hmm? I'll just demonstrate a little bit of this. So this is Coward. This is Coward. In which the stories are made of Maya Jal. In which I can live in the stories and the ones who are listening to the stories. So this is Coward. It has stories living in it. I can enter in it and really reveal the stories. But only if there are people who can listen. So are you ready to listen? Yeah. And if you say yes, then I will increase the story. Yes? 
बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आपका इजाजत लेना बहुत जरूरी है बिकॉज इजाजत लिए बिना हम कोई काम करें शुरू तो मजा नहीं आता है आज हमारे यहाँ इतने पेड़ कटते हैं कौन पेड़ों की इजाजत लेता है हम एक दूसरे को परेशान करते हैं कहाँ इजाजत लेते हैं ना टीचर स्टूडेंट का ना स्टूडेंट टीचर का ना माँ बाप माँ बच्चों का और ना बच्चे माँ बाप की इजाजत लेते हैं इजाजत लेना बहुत जरूरी है आपने इजाजत दे दी है तो मैं इस कावड़ को शुरू करता हूँ तो ये दोनों कौन है आप अगर इनको गौर से देखें तो आपके दिमाग में जरूर कोई ना कोई बात आएगी क्या आपको लगता है कि कौन है ये दोनों बताइए आपको आपको क्या लगता है कौन है ये दोनों राम और श्याम और सोचिए सोचिए हाँ गेट कीपर्स तो मैं आपको कोई कहानी सुनाता हूं कि मेरे को इनको देख के लगता है कि ये दोनों भाई हैं मुझे ऐसा लगता है अभी कि ये दोनों भाई हैं पर अलग खून है दोनों में जैसे मन से हाथ छूटा माया जाल में फंस गए प्रेम किया एक ही लड़की से फिर ज्ञान विवेक भी क्या करे वो काल वृक्ष की बेटी थी वो काल वृक्ष की बेटी थी और विष्णु की मुंह बोली बहन वास नाम में नैन शुद्ध हुए नदी किनारे अकेला देखकर झपट पड़े शूरवीर पर काल की दृष्टि कहां नहीं कर कैद यहां पर छोड़ दिया मिटा दिया भूत मिटा दिया देश खोए बेटों की तलाश में बाप बड़ा विचलित हुआ भक्त बाप ने तब किया विष्णु को प्रसन्न किया पर बीता हुआ काल और घुमा हुआ चक्र विष्णु स्वयं फिरा नहीं सकते तब विष्णु ने इस कावड़ में इन दोनों की पहचान छुपाई अब विष्णु का एक रूप तो कृष्ण भी है पहचान के साथ एक शर्त लगाई कि किस्सों के इस कावड़ में जो जाएगा वो या तो खुद खो जाएगा या इन दोनों की पहचान वापस बाहर लेकर आएगा अब ये बात तो जग जाहिर है कि जो खुद संसार में होता है वो संसार देख नहीं सकता जो संसार के बाहर है उसी को सारा संसार दिखता है अब मैं खुद इस कावड़ में चला जाऊंगा तो मुझे कैसे पता चलेगी इनकी पहचान इसलिए आप लोग जो बाहर बैठे हैं हमारी ऑडियंस जो बाहर हैं उन्हीं को सारा संसार दिखता है आप दोनों अगर वादा करें कि कहानियां सुनकर इन दोनों की पहचान बता पाए तो मैं अपना सर रखू इस ओखली में कही ये पहचान बता पाएंगे इस जाल को समझ पाएंगे हाँ कहें हुकारा भरे एंड इफ यू से यस तभी मैं किस्सों से किस्सा बढ़ाऊंगा बताइए पहचान बता पाएंगे इस जाल को समझ पाएंगे यस बहुत बढ़िया तो ठीक रही फिर बात आपके हुकारों से बढ़ती रहे बात संध्या का वक्त था माने शाम का वक्त था और चांद सूरज आसमान में संध्या का वक्त था चांद सूरज आसमान में डूबता सूरज थका हुआ था चांद उसे देख मुस्कुरा रहा था मुस्कुराहट से खींच उठी सूरज भी फिर तमतमा गया और एक तेवर सूरज के चांद भी फिर चुप ना रहा बरसाने लगा अंगड़ाइया मदमस्त चांदनी की रोशनी में गजब नजारा बिखर गया धमासान सा हो गया रंग बिखरे आसमान में धरती रात कली में भूल गई अब वक्त हुआ वक्त के आगे किसकी चलती है वक्त हुआ तो सूरज डूबा चांद भी गुस्से में लौट गया उसी दिन से अमावस हुई अंधेरी काली रात हुई मैडम जी उसके पहले अमावस नहीं होती थी उसी दिन पहली बार अमावस हुई और अंधेरी काली रात हुई दोनों रूठे बैठे रहे और यहाँ धरती पर हलचल हुई गुस्सा तो गुस्सा है गुस्से से बड़ा गुरूर है गुरूर के रहते पत्थर पानी में डूबे गुरूर के रहते कितने सर कटते गुरूर दोनों में उफना हुआ था अगर आसमान में लौट गए तो हारे माने जाएंगे कई उपाय किए गए संतों फकीरों विद्वानों साइंटिस्टों हमारे मोदी जी को बुलाया गया बिडन को बुलाया सबको किसी से कुछ हुआ नहीं अब जब कुछ हुआ नहीं तो राम रहीम को पुकारा गया जब कुछ होता दिखा नहीं तो राम रहीम को पुकारा गया पर ये दोनों एक और परेशानी सुलझा रहे थे दुनिया में महाबली तीनों लोगों पर राज करने निकला था खून की प्यासी उसकी टोली उसे चक्रवती बनाने निकली थी तीन चौथाई धरती और एक चौथाई पानी वो पहले ही जीत चुका था अब रात अमावस्या की वजह से चांद और सूरज के जाने की वजह से इसकी सेना भी एक जगह रुकी हुई थी राम रहीम इसको रोकने में लगे थे पर अंधेरे की समस्या आन पड़ी थी तो फिर इन दोनों ने तय किया कि अभी अच्छा मौका है वक्त है चांद और सूरज की प्रॉब्लम पहले सुलझाई जाए क्योंकि उसके बिना तो पूरी दुनिया नष्ट हो जाएगी तो राम चले चांद के पास रहीम पहुंचे सूरज के द्वार चांद थोड़ा चंचल था झांक झांक कर देख रहा था सूरज अभिमान से भरा हुआ था आक्रोश में बैठा हुआ था रहीम ने सूरज से सवाल किया अरे व्हाट्सअप क्या रे बंधु क्या बात है किस बात का गुरूर है भाई ये अभिमान कितनों ने किया आज उनके नामों निशान कहाँ हैं यो हट लेकर क्यों बैठा है क्यों कमरे में बंद बैठा है संसार का संचालक तू है तेरे रुकने से सब रुका हुआ है यो अभिमान में बैठकर अपनी जरूरत ना खो देना तू एक तारा है हाँ तू अगर चला भी जाएगा तो और कई तारे मिल जाएंगे ये जो घमंड तू करता है तेरी 
बुद्धि से जन्मा है क्योंकि तू इंटेलिजेंट है पढ़ा लिखा है समझदार आप सब भी समझदार हैं तो जब हम आप बहुत पढ़ाई लिखाई कर लेते हैं समझदार हो जाते हैं तो हमको घमंड आ जाता है कभी कभी तो मैं तुझे एक कहानी कहूँगा मैं एक पहली बूझूँगा जो जवाब तूने दे दिया मैं अभी लौट जाऊँगा तो भाई हमारे यहाँ कहानियों की प्रथा है क्योंकि कहानियाँ सुनने से हमारा मन और हमारा दिमाग निर्मल हो जाता है शांत हो जाता है तो मैं एक कहानी कहूंगा एक पहली बूझूंगा जो जवाब तूने दे दिया मैं अभी लौट जाऊंगा वरना आसमान में लौटोगे चांद को भी मनाओगे कहो मंजूर है सूरज ने सोचा बात तो ये ठीक कहता है किस बात का गुरूर मैं करता हूं पर खेल देखिए माया का अरे खेल देखिए माया का सूरज की जबान से निकला अरे जा तू क्या मुझे हराएगा सुना क्या किस्सा सुनाएगा ठीक रही फिर बात आपके हुकारे से बढ़ती रहे बात एंड दिस इज हाउ इट कंटिन्यूज एंड वी गो टू द नेक्स्ट स्टोरी so so this is covered box i i'm i'm this is a perform this is a 45 minute performance it goes on long uh, but this is just to can start this is one story goes into another another goes into another like how lot of indian traditional art do like the cycle about things right and so this opens like this and so in the process of creating this this work i started recognizing the second point which i was struggling with one is the craft the creativity all those ideas and second is what am i doing it for like what's the point right what's the whole I, whole thing and there's no answer but performing the piece itself is the answer each time i perform i it makes sense to me to perform but if somebody asks me why i can't explain it i don't know why i don't have intelligent answers to tell why and that was big revelation being with this work being with the tradition being with the folk life that you don't need to answer all your questions but it need to make sense to you ultimately that is why it is art that it has to make sense to you you have to express something so if i today after some 4 5 years of performing this i answer i have some intelligent answers just to make myself feel good is that it reminds me of many things it's like it's like oh oh you are actually this is happening to you now it's like a reminder right it's like expressing something which which i feel inside maybe and that i have tried now to bring into most of my other work so so this is just one of the project we do yeah and and it's not that i am a covered artist only i don't call myself that but the engagement with the folk art has brought this idea that trust your gut like go with the sense you sh- it is good that you don't know how to answer something because that is exactly when the, the joy of art is because if you know what's the point so there's something which we know i i know at this moment there is so much i don't know and that's beautiful this coming to terms with this no unknown this uncertainty is important and that i now consciously keep in the work i create i have gone i don't know all over the place with respect to what i planned uh but that's okay oh couple of things which if people i mean i also thought about if there's something like take away ideas like things which people want to couple of things which i want to share one is obviously that there has to be craft and what do i mean by craft uh is the the ideas and the the ability to to convert something into art right so we always need something so that we can share like words movement sound camera paint paper like these are important elements because because without that you cannot express an idea an idea not just intellectual idea but a sensorial experience so we need something called like through what you are doing it what is the lens what is the frame what are the elements which you are working with and we need to develop craft of that right if i'm going to use voice in my performance i need better we have a good voice if i'm going to use my body if i'm going to use my energy i should train in that and that was the most comforting part that i understood bang in the beginning of my days that's the one part what is the element and how do we make use of the element because we all are artists because we all can make sound i'm really bad musically i'm musically challenged person but that that's exactly what the inhibition is and that's what the folk world is saying we have sound let's make use of it let's find joy in doing it Yeah, that's that's so beautiful to know. I don't need to train as singer to make a sound like who. I can still do it, and we are not doing that as we are progressing. And that's the sad reality. We all are becoming so self-conscious 
about. We all know one of the greatest thing education has done is it has taught all of us to write and read. That's, I think, the most important thing education has done. Now we can write, then why are we not writing? We can read, then why are we not reading? And why are we not spending that time? Because the whole idea is that once you have the language, you will find joy. Right? But becoming self-conscious. So anyway, the so first part, obviously, as, as artists, is to spend time with the elements and how to arrange those elements, how to structure them, how to put them together, whatever you want to do. But then the most important thing to me now is to sort of be open to unknown, you know, to, so to experience and know if it is working or not, rather than being intelligent, if it is helping me make sense or not. Right? And so that's the idea that, that now it's about sensing and letting go of the craft, letting go of the technique, letting go of what we know and enter into what we don't know. So now this, these ideas now continue to influence the work we do. Like we are doing a work next month, which is called Monk and Alexander. It's an international collaboration where people from different parts of the world are coming together. And a quite known playwright from India is, Mumbai is coming to Bangalore to work on it. And, and we're looking at the queer culture in India and, and the mythology and history and the contemporary times and the legal side and all of it. And coming together is an important part now for us. So whatever, now I, I've, I've stopped thinking about myself only as performer, right? And, and so one of my teachers said once in class that theater is not just about four walls and a stage. It's more than that. And I always thought, what does it mean? And I feel that every possible moment when we come together is a moment of theater. If we create value in that moment, then it's worthy of theater. If you don't create value of that, then it's just life, it's just, just passing on, it's just going. Because it has inherent value, we just need to mine it in some way, we just need to get it out. So now I spend a lot of time in terms of thinking about what can I do. So in this entire project, which is about Monk and Alexander, it's a story, it's the first meeting point of Alexander to India, and then we are connecting it to the, the queer culture in India in all, all forms. And multiple artists are coming to work on, research on it. And right now, my job is to find accommodation for them. My job is to find the studio for them. That's, that's what my job is. Because by doing that, I'm still doing theater. Because I'm enabling that kind of space. So sometimes all you need to do is that. Sometimes all you need to do is train. So where we do a lot of voice training, storytelling training, and all those trainings. And for me, that's theater. Because I have to invest in each individual who is part of the, the, the session, right? Because in that interaction of technique sharing, it will add value to everyone's life. So even teaching has become practicing theater. Right? So, so that's where folk world continue to influence. And recently, I, I'm still not at a place where I can confidently say I know what it is or I know how it is influencing my practice. But during the COVID times, obviously a lot of folk artists uh, suffered because their livelihood depends on everyday rituals. And nothing was happening. That was the first thing which was like stopped. Right? And so we started working with them, supporting them in whatever possible way, ration, food, medical emergencies, whatever. And the entire process allowed me to look at my immediate reality. It's always easy to talk about big things, to look at the world from like internet point of view, right? But we forget to experience life which is what Khoja Ramji said, which is what the point was, that for us it is not about art or anything, it is about living it. And I felt, ah, that work which we happen to do on ground and we continue to do, allowed me to actually live a life, to, to be connected to reality rather than talk about big things. Right? And, and, and I hope that that continues with, uh, with whatever we do next, to experience it rather than to, to know it only. That's it, I think. That's all I have for today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.